I'm starting to feel like every single time I walk into one of these exorcism movies, it makes me a little bit more religious as well. It's like, please God, make this movie not suck. So The Exorcism is another religious horror movie talking about paranormal demons, exorcisms, all of that type of stuff you feel like you've probably already seen about four or five times this year. A movie I'm pretty sure nobody asked to be made, and it's a movie that's so derivative it really only has the creativity to change the last letter in its name. And be warned, this is another one of those movies I feel like is a little bit mismarketed. You come into this thinking it's like a pure exorcism movie, like the ones we get recently in the last six to 12 months all the time. It's not really that. It's kind of broken into two movies down the middle. Like you have the first half of this movie, the expiration of film, how they're making this movie, him getting this role. It's like a character study about this broken man. Second half of this movie, it goes a little bit more full horror, the way they're committing to the exorcism presence. But just be warned going into this, it's not really traditional, you know, the first omen, Immaculate. It's a lot different than those movies, in my opinion. But what this one's about, it stars Russell Crowe again. I feel like not too long ago, he came out with another exorcist type movie, but he's in this one again. He's playing Tony. He's like this single dad who's kind of down on his luck, having a rough go of things. And they make it abundantly clear when you're watching this that this guy's basically a total wreck. You know, he has no relationship with his daughter, and that's so bad. In fact, she doesn't even call him dad. She just calls him Tony. She doesn't respect him at all. You know, his wife has died of cancer. He was a drunk. He has no work. He's trying to get back on his feet and become an actor, and he's really, really psyched to land this role, possibly to play a priest. It's kind of one of these meta movies where they're kind of portraying an exorcism in the movie, but the movie itself is also about an exorcism. Starting off, I was actually a big fan of the fact that this is one of those movies that's pretty meta when it comes to making movies. I mean, obviously, I review movies. I like movies a lot. I found the whole like back process of how they like cast the way they kind of go by on the fourth wall. I really liked that. I thought that was really interesting in this movie and I really wish they explored it a little bit more. They don't really fully commit as much as I would have liked them to when it comes to the way they make this movie, the meta-ness of scary movies, things like that. But it was something I did get joy in, but again, I'm kind of a cinephile, so take my word at that with a grain of salt. The other thing I really liked in this movie that stood out to me was the character building and the depth to the character of Russell Crowe's character, Tony, the guy who's kind of overcoming a damaged life. I think they really sell you on the fact this guy is basically down on his luck, has absolutely nothing going for it. Again, I think it's brought to light by the fact that Russell Crowe is just an amazing actor. So all of the scenes he needs to elevate, you know, the meta inside of him acting, trying to get into the role, him overcoming his past grief. I think he really sells you on that because, again, he's such a good actor. Anyone else could have possibly fumbled this role. It was really important they got him. I really like the fact that they really build on the fact that he just has nothing going for it. He's lost his wife. His daughter does not like him. He can't get work anymore. He's a drunk. You just feel absolutely sorry for this guy. Like he has nothing going for him. There's a scene in particular in this movie that's pretty dang hard to watch, honestly, where he's absolutely fumbling a line. You know, he can't get into the role. He's just not in the right headspace. And the director walks up to this guy and just absolutely rips him a new one. The director walks up to Russell Crowe's character and he's like, Tony, man, I took a chance on you. The studio's taking a chance on you. You need to get into the role. And he starts giving him a spiel. He's like, Tony, this role embodies you. You're guilty. You're a loser. Your daughter doesn't love you. Your wife is dead. You left her. Like, he just keeps, he's just ripping this guy to shreds. And it, Russell Crowe's character is just kind of standing there taking it. He's like a stoic. Like he just like, and it's like, you just feel so bad for this guy. Like this guy has absolutely nothing. This guy has been beaten to shit. I don't know. I think they did a really good job at building up the first half of this movie. That his character basically is trying to be redeemed, but he's just kind of a piece of shit and he's useless. They really sell you on that. When I was watching this, I definitely had to hit on the fact that one of the most ironic scenes I've ever seen in this movie is like, they're talking about how Russell Crowe's character can't act anymore. He can't sell the big scene. He's a drunk. He's a loser. They're just laying it on this guy. And the big scene that he just can't fulfill is the big like exorcism scene where, you know, the power of Christ compel you. Like that scene, the scene we've all seen in these type of movies. They're like, you just can't nail it. You're not nailing this scene. This is the scene in these movies. I always hate that scene. That's the scene in these movies that makes me instantly roll the eyes in the back of my head. And I instantly check out with like 15 minutes left. Like usually I'm kind of on board with these movies. And then it gets to that scene. I find that scene boring as shit because we've seen the way it's done about 30 or so times. Just had to pinpoint the irony and the fact that that's the big holdup in the movie they're making. And it's the scene I give a shit about the least every time. And since this movie's almost split into two halves, as I said, the first half of the movie's kind of tackling all that stuff. The second half of this movie's the scary stuff. You could almost view the whole entire first half of this movie, maybe the movie in general, giant metaphor for the fact that Russell Crowe's exercising his own demons. You know, it's one of those things where it's like kind of a character piece. He's kind of becoming redeemed as the movie goes on. And when you get into the second half of this movie and you're talking about the scares, the tension, the jump scares they drizzle in, basically all of the factors that would bring an audience member to see this movie. You know, they want to see religious horror movies, demons, all that type of stuff. Holy fuck, is this movie generic as hell. I want you to think right now about basically anything you've ever seen in one of these movies. And I guarantee whatever you named is in this movie. You have flickering lights, 
loud bottles popping when scenes jump scene to scene. You have characters exploring dark hallways alone, jump scares, eyes rolling into the back of their head. Every single fucking thing you could think of is in this movie. It's getting to the point now where I'm like reluctant to call these tropes when it comes to religious horror movies. These are like a backbone of the genre now. These are like the foundation of these movies. It feels like a lot of these movies are almost afraid to just fully commit to any form of an exorcism movie without using the tropes. Like a director just told them, yeah, man, I kind of like your movie, but it would be better with about five to seven tropes. When it comes to the scares and the horror in this movie, I will give this movie a little bit of credit. And that's the fact that it has the balls to be rated R. I mean, we get so many PG-13 clones of this genre of religious horror movies. At least it fully commits to the bit of being like a gruesome movie, showing some blood, showing some kills on camera. I'll give it credit for that. I definitely think there's one kill in particular that they showed graphically. I thought was actually really cool related to a mirror. Like when they showed that, I was like, oh, at least we got that. We don't usually get that in these movies. Also, the way this movie chooses to end the big generic tropey scene with the exorcism where you always have like a guy compelling a demon out of somebody, a girl on a bed, that type of thing. I definitely think it's well above average when it comes to creativity. They do a little bit of a spin on the normal riff. Again, it's kind of generic leading up to the end, but the actual ending in particular I thought was creative enough. It was a lot different than all the other ones I saw this year, so props for that. But there is one other scene in this movie I want to bring light to that's kind of suspect as is. You have these two younger characters, they're kind of love interest, they're kind of kissing, making out which is already kind of weird and unsettling to begin with because you'd be led to believe these might be minors. There's conversations in this movie about going to school, things like that. So you're kind of like, what are we really showing here? And when they kind of leave the room, they hear a noise. There's obviously like a demon presence. It starts doing that demon voice. You know, the thing where the demon just has, it's unhinged. It will say anything. One of those scenes. And the demon says something to the girls in this scene. And I was like, he, he said, what? Like, what the, f he said that? And if you've seen this movie, you probably know the line I'm talking about. And it was like, what are we doing, Hollywood? What? I just had to bring it up. I could not go without mentioning that line. When I was in the theater, I was laughing like, what? This one's definitely a weird one for me because they never really fully commit to the movie making bit. You know, I think they could have had a lot of fun with the meta-ness of a movie set within a movie. They don't really fully lean into that like the trailer would lead you to believe. So missed opportunity there. Pretty generic in general. I don't think the scares and all that type of stuff are very effective. I mean, you've seen all of these tropes a dozen times in the past couple of years. But all that being said, I didn't mind this movie. I bet you didn't see that one coming. I don't know, this movie was only like 90 minutes long and it definitely wasn't one of the worst ones I've seen this year. I kind of like the fact that it didn't lean so heavily into being like an exorcism movie where it was more about Russell Crowe's character because it was something different. We've seen so many movies that were just jump scares, people being possessed. This movie's not heavily in that camp. There's some of that stuff in this movie. They lean into that a little bit, but it's more about his character than the actual demons, things like that. And I actually appreciate that because I've seen that other form of movie three times this year. All of this leads me to the conclusion that you could definitely do worse. And I know this for a fact because I've already seen a couple of them this year. So if you've seen or heard of this exorcism movie, if you have, comment down below or let me know what your favorite religious horror movie is. Always looking for good ones. As always, if you haven't subscribed, what the hell are you waiting for? I do it all on this channel. New releases, scary stuff, tier lists, all that. Join me down below. But that's all I got in this video. Peace.